Hey folks, and welcome to this video. We are going to be talking about conditional formatting. And in this particular video, I'm going to cover all of the basics, the foundations, the essential knowledge you need to know about conditional formatting. And in the other video that's part of the series of two is all of the advanced tips and tricks. So if you are, if you are already familiar with conditional formatting, then feel free to jump over to that other video and learn all about the more advanced techniques. But in this video, what we're going to do is focus on what we call conditional formatting, which is formatting that is applied based on conditions being met within your data. So things like numbers exceeding certain thresholds, and you want to highlight those values to bring some attention to them. So as I said, in this video, what we'll do is focus on the foundations, the basics. So under format rules, we'll be looking at all of these built-in rules. So the text ones, the date ones, the number ones. What we will skip in this video is the custom formula ones. So we'll leave the custom formula ones to the advanced video. So if you're after custom formula ones, you want to apply formatting across an entire row or an entire column, then go and check out that custom formula video, part two. Okay, let's highlight the whole data set. And the quick way to do that, by the way, is to press Control A or Command A, and it will just highlight the edges of the bounds. So the first thing to know about conditional formatting is you have to highlight all of the range of cells you want to apply it to. So it's not like a pivot table where you, for a pivot table, if I want to do a pivot table on this whole data, it doesn't matter if I've highlighted the data or not. I can just be clicked here insert a pivot table and it will grab all of that data that's linked, if you like, continuous to this cell. Conditional formatting is a bit different. We have to highlight the whole data set there to make sure we get all of the rows and columns we want. We'll go up to format and we'll go to conditional formatting. And it always defaults to just saying format the cells if they're not empty. So this is a good place to start because it illustrates what we're doing here, what the formatting is doing. It's just saying, if the cell is not empty in this range we've chosen, apply this style here, which we can set. So we could say bold, we could say not bold, italic, not italic, change the color of the text, change the background of the text, all these sorts of things. So, so let's just switch it to empty. They're the easiest to, and you can see there, Obviously, there's no text in these empty ones, so it won't show up with text, so that doesn't really count. But you can see that all it's doing is just, let's get uh, a yellow. It's going to be something that's kind of useful to say, hey, look, there's some blank cells in your data set that you might very easily miss if you didn't have the formatting on. But with the formatting, it can highlight those blank cells. So that's the first one, just to show you, is the is empty and is not empty. Now, really, really important with conditional formatting to keep an eye on this range, because sometimes the the range can get out of whack, out of line with what you want to, to highlight. So if you find anything going wrong with your rules, always come back and just check this range is the range you want to apply the formatting to. And if it's not, just change it, delete it, highlight it again if you want. Click OK, add a second range if you need to, that sort of thing. All right, back in conditional formatting. Let's just clear that one out now. That was the empty one. I have my data highlighted already. We'll add another rule. And this time we did is empty and is not empty. Let's take a look at these contains, these text ones. So we'll say text contains and we'll say Ross. And there we go. You can see it's highlighted those ones for us. Now, you could go obviously and change the formatting to whatever you wish, say to that yellow there. So that's saying find any text that contains the word Ross. Now, if you had some funny word with Ross in the middle here, it will capture it and highlight it. So you have to be careful. Uh, that's going to find the, it's not looking specifically for the name Ross per se. It's just looking for those four characters, R-O-S-S. -S. doesn't matter if they're capitals or lowercase. Now, if we want to say, well, I know that, you know, I'm really looking for people who have the surname Ross. Well, let's try saying ends with. 
And now it's just found those only those three. You can see it now doesn't have that one Ross Smith. If we do a start with, you'll see it highlights the Ross Smith, but now it doesn't highlight those other Ross ones. Now, if you're sitting here thinking, well, how do I get this to apply to a whole row? That's what I really want to do. Check out the advanced conditional formatting video because we can't do that with these built-in format rules. We need to use the custom format rules. And my second video, conditional advanced conditional formatting is all about these custom rules. Okay, so that was contains, does not contain. Well, that's going to highlight everything that doesn't have a ROS if you want to kind of do the opposite. Uh, starts with and ends with we did. Text is exactly, well, it's not going to highlight any ROSs. But what if we said we want to say the text is exactly buyer? Then it's going to highlight these buyer rows for us, which is really nice. Okay, so let's take a look at date conditional formatting. And let me tell you a little bit about dates first before we do the conditional formatting. I'll let you in on a little trick that you may or may not know about with dates is, let me just highlight some dates here. Let me change them to numbers. Huh, very odd. Well, that's how dates are stored in spreadsheets. They're actually just numbers and it's how many days since the 1st of January, 1900 because they're numbers, it lets you do things like add dates together, take dates away to get how many days there are between two dates. So dates are numbers. And why I'm telling you that is because if we, let's take them back to proper dates, but let me just say, leave the first few as numbers, just so we can keep this in mind, or the, so there's middle three there. Let's make them numbers. Okay, so they're just showing as numbers, those dates. And Let's just delete this column for a moment. So this, I want this column here to be showing. So now I'll highlight my data set just as before. And you'll see I've got the date column. So we're going to add a rule and we'll say the date is, and we'll start with, if we say date is, it's going to highlight any cell where the date is exactly equal to today. If I want to do something different, I could say, pick some other options they have here, like today, uh, tomorrow, yesterday, in the past week, in the past month, none of which are gonna show up with this data set, or I can pick a, an exact date and then just type it in. So 3rd, 24, there we are, the 2nd of March, 2024. So that's date is, now if I do date is after the 3rd, the 2nd of March, 2024, let's just make it the 1st of March, 2024, You'll see it then captures that one. You see it's highlighted all my dates, but it's also highlighted all of these numbers. So in fact, what we could do is just to show you is we could format these as dates and it's the year, it's the 11th of January, 2,798, the 25th of November, 5,034. Uh, so, you know, it's able to format them as dates because these are big numbers. So just keep that in mind. And perhaps what we might say in this example is, let's pedal back a little because we're getting a little confused here, is let's just turn these back to dates because we're talking about dates. We want them to be dates. And let's just highlight the date column rather than including these number columns. So just really all of that was just to be, make you aware of that issue when you're highlighting and if you're suddenly wondering why other cells are being highlighted with your conditional formatting, it might be because you're doing dates and you have these big numbers that the spreadsheet thinks are dates. So now we'll say date is after an exact date of the uh, 1st of March, 2024. And now it just highlights the dates that we want. And again, we could go and change those colors if we want to something. So that's how we work with dates. Let's just highlight another rule now and let's do a number rule. Let's do the number rules now. So we'll say greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, less than or equal to, is equal to, is not equal to, and is between, and is not between. So lots of different things with numbers. Again, let's just be a little more precise and change this by just typing in F1 to F21. And that will just then make sure we're just working on the, this number column only. And we'll say, we'll do the number is greater than, and we'll say uh, 400,000. 
So one of the properties over 400,000, also done. So let's highlight this column here and add another rule. And this time we'll say is greater than, we'll say, let's say 700,000. Uh, and let's make the 700,000 one a different color to make sure we can see it. We'll make those ones, uh, the, the bright orange done. Okay, hang on a minute, you're thinking, why are all my, everything over 400,000 is highlighted, but these ones over 700, there's one there, there's one there, and one there, they're not being highlighted, why is that? So let's go conditional formatting again. And by the way, let me show you this trick as well, since we're here, format, conditional formatting. You see, if I highlight the rules, it puts the green border around this column F to tell me where the ranges the rules are being applied. Now, if I X out of here, come over here, click outside of that column F where that rule is applied, and I say format, conditional formatting, then it doesn't think there's any rules applied to this column. It's prompting me to create a rule. So it only opens the rules that you have applied if you're in the range where they're being applied. So now when I say conditional formatting, it does in fact show them because I'm clicking in column F. So really important to know that. Now then, this is the another very important thing to know about conditional formatting rules is that the order they're in here is the order that they are applied. The top one takes precedence over ones underneath. And if I had a third rule down here, that would be third in the pecking order. So really I want to be highlighting anything that's over 700,000 first because that will turn them orange. And then everything over 400,000 is beyond uh, below that because those 700s sort of take precedence over the 400. So you can grab where those dots are to the side and when you'll see, you'll see when it changes to that four-way movement arrow, you can swap, you can drag your rules around. And if I had a third one, I can drag that into the mix as well. And that is how you can just make sure you get the order right. So they're highlighting the ones that you need to see first. Now, another question that comes up a lot with conditional formatting that we'll, we'll answer here is, how do I copy this into another somewhere else? How can I copy these rules somewhere else? Okay, so we're gonna copy them somewhere else. But first of all, let me just add a couple more rules to make this a little easier to see. So let me highlight the whole data, format, conditional formatting, add another rule is empty. We'll say, we'll make the empty cells bright yellow. There they are, those, those ones. So we'll say done. We'll add another rule and we'll say text contains buyer. So those ones there and we'll make that one bright purple. Done. Okay, so we've, we've got these funky rules that we're really proud of that we want to apply to. We have a new data set over here and we want to apply the rules. Now what's important is that I have the same columns and positions of the columns in this data set here. So the rules can be copied across to the same positions. But that's about the only thing you really need to be careful of. Otherwise you can just highlight this data set, the whole thing. So just Command A or Control A or drag across if you prefer. So highlight the whole thing, use the format painter here, the paint format, click that, come into sheet two and then click on listing in the top corner there. And you saw it applied those rules for me. And now, you can see because it's gonna apply it to the same size range as this one, which went down to row 21. So it's gone down to row 21 this time, and it's highlighted all of these as blanks for us now. A couple of blanks there. We've got far less buyers now in this data set. You can see we have more buyers in this data set. So we know it's a different data set. We've got uh, the values being applied still. And if I open the conditional formatting, then all the rules have copied across perfectly. They're just, applied as they are in the sheet one data set. So that's actually really handy. So that's the paint format trick. You can move your conditional formatting rules very quickly from one sheet to another. Okay, so now suppose we want to make this permanent. Here we have the data, format, conditional formatting. Okay, it's all conditional formatting still. Decided that I don't need that anymore. I just want this applied permanently. I'm going to copy that step one while I have my whole data up highlighted. Step two is to format clear formatting. So click clear formatting under format or use the shortcut. That looks like that. 
Then the next step is to somewhere in my data here is to right click, paste special and say format only. So paste special format only. And then it applies all those formats back, but it applies them as permanent now. And if I open my format, conditional formatting rules, I don't have any rules. These aren't rules anymore. They're just background colors of cells now. So that's how you do it if you want to apply the conditional formatting or change the conditional formatting into just permanent formatting. Great. Well, that's a look at all of the basic foundational features of conditional formatting. It's a hugely useful technique to understand and be able to apply. What I really encourage you to do is go away and practice what you've learned in this video. Once you've mastered all that, which really shouldn't take you too long, come back and check out the advanced video where you'll learn how to do things like apply these formats across entire rows, which gets very useful, or down entire columns, or highlight rows where it's a seller over a certain value. So we're gonna go into a lot more examples that are more complex, but also more likely to be the sort of real world problems you're trying to solve. So thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss future videos. All right, thanks for watching folks. I'll see you again soon in another video. Bye for now.